Today we turn our attention to the final lines of the Apostles' Creed, beginning with the affirmation, I believe in the Holy Ghost. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Notice what we have just said. This is not simply a doctrinal statement. We're not saying we believe that there is such a thing as the Holy Spirit. We're saying we place our trust in the Holy Spirit, just as we place our trust in God the Father and in Jesus Christ. But with these first two, we can to some degree visualize or relate to them easily. Though we shouldn't, we naturally visualize the Father as a mighty being, one in whose image we are made. And as we talked about earlier, the fact that we use a human metaphor, Father, to name this God makes it easy to understand how we relate to him. And in Jesus Christ, we have a flesh and blood human being who lived and walked among us, who spoke to crowds of people, who walked up and down the region around the Sea of Galilee, who ate and drank and did all the things we routinely do as human beings. But the Holy Spirit remains uniquely diff difficult to envision and understand. The old English translation that we still use today unhelpfully calls this one the Holy Ghost. When we think of ghosts, we think of misty apparitions of dead people who come to invade our world and trouble us. But this is not what the Holy Spirit is or does. In the first place, the Holy Spirit is not the misty manifestation of the spirit of a person long dead. The Holy Spirit is the present manifestation of the living God. And the Holy Spirit doesn't come to haunt or trouble us. The Spirit comes to empower and strengthen us in our common work as Christian people. This third article of the Apostles' Creed can seem like a kind of mishmash, a grab bag of beliefs. Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, and so forth. But these are all works of the Holy Spirit. But before we get to those things, let's talk about the person of the Trinity that we call the Holy Spirit. There are several passages from the New Testament we could refer to here. There are the references to the Holy Spirit at the baptism of Jesus. Jesus directs the disciples to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit to empower them after he ascends to the Father. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descends on the disciples with the sound of a rushing wind, with tongues of fire, and with the ability to speak in various languages in order to proclaim the gospel. The book of Acts, formally called the Acts of the Apostles, could more accurately be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. During the Last Supper, on the night of Christ's betrayal and arrest, Jesus spoke to his disciples about the Holy Spirit whom he referred to as the Advocate, or in Greek, the Paraclete. In John's version of the Last Supper, Jesus speaks at length to the, to the disciples about, about the importance of love and the promise of God's ongoing presence with them after Jesus himself departs from them. He says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you." Different English translations of the Bible render this word paraclete differently. The New Revised Standard Version, which I routinely use, re renders it as advocate. The King James renders it as comforter. The New International renders it counselor. The Amplified Bible, Helper. The Common English Bible, Companion. And Eugene Peterson, who made his own translation called The Message, renders it Friend. All of these translations of paraclete are correct, but all give only a facet of what the word means. In calling the Spirit the paraclete, Jesus uses a word that indicates a constant companion, guide, protector, one who empowers the church and sustains at work, come what may. In short, the Holy Spirit is the active power and presence of God working in and through the church 
to bring about God's purposes in the world through the church. How does the Spirit do this? Let's pay attention in the next few days to what we say in the rest of the creed for clues about the Spirit's work. Tomorrow we'll talk about the most important thing in the Spirit's work, the Holy Catholic Church. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.